Athens. Welcome to the Classic City Business Podcast. Our mission, to connect our community to the local business owner. If you love Athens and love supporting the people behind our businesses, then you're in the right place. We get to know the people behind the sign. Some are legends, others are on their way. You're listening to the Classic City Business Podcast with your friend, your host, all-around great guy and owner of Generations Commercial Cleaning, John Glutt. So get ready, buckle up, hang on, here we go. Hello Athens, welcome to the Classic City Business Podcast. I'm your host, John G, and today we are connecting our community to the YMCA over here in Winder. And I've always known it as the Aikens YMCA, by the way. I was sharing with um, one of our guests, Angie, earlier that um, many, many moons ago, and I think Brad, our other guest, Brad Aikens, um, it probably was the early 2000s that I, that I was a member over here when I lived in Gwinnett County just right on the edge over here. But um, it's changed some names and stuff, so what I'm gonna do, if you guys will just do a real quick introduction of yourself, your roles, and then um, let's talk about you know, the, the journey, how I got started here, and what's, what's happened mission-wise, name changes, things that are happening. I, there's a lot of exciting stuff happening, we'll get into that, but let's just start with introducing yourself. Okay, um, I'm Angie Putman. I'm the CEO of the Brad Aikens YMCA, which we're called the YMCA of Georgia's Piedmont. And that includes the two Ys, the Bell Family YMCA and the Brad Aikens YMCA. And we actually just started site work for a third YMCA in Walton County. So staying pretty busy. <laughs> Sounds like Very. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, Brad Aikens, um, owner of Aikens Ford Chrysler Dodge Jeep, uh, was on the original board here when the Y started and was on the board for many, many, many years. Uh, while I'm not on the board officially anymore, I'm, I guess I would be the ex officio person because I've always got my fingers in something on here with Angie, especially on facilities. All right. Well, very good. Uh, let's start at the beginning, if you will. Um, we don't have to get into a whole big long story, but obviously the, the journey has changed. It's taken us into some different directions. There have been additions. Uh, talk, to, talk to us a little bit about the mission now, where it started, and how you've seen that sort of progress over the, how many years has it been? 1996 was when we first oh, had our years. summer camp at the summer camp summer camp at the at the uh, Fort Yargo out here, and then opened up a facility uh, downtown, uh, courtesy of, of Chris Maddox and his family in uh, the fall of '96. You know, I'm of the age where 1996 doesn't sound that long ago, mm -hmm. but somebody told me the other day just how many years that was. Mm -hmm. um, so we're all getting old, but we're going to skip right over that. Yeah. Um, so what is, the, what is the main mission? If you had to describe in a paragraph um, what your mission is to the community, what would it be? Well, our mission has always been to put Christian principles into practice through programs that build a healthy spirit, mind, and body for all. And we're here to serve the community, to do what's best for our community and our members and our, <clears throat> our seniors, our kids, our, our youth. And that has been our mission and will continue to be our mission and will always be our mission. Okay. What, what, she, what she said. What yeah. she said, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. a smart man right yeah, there. That's it, yeah. <laughs> um, what, what does that look like here? I, I've been told that the YMCA is kind of like a church. They all have their own identities, their own cultures, their mm -hmm. own um, communities, literally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like for you guys here? I, this is obviously a lot of square footage. They, I, I, we did a, a tour before we started this, um, and it, it blew my mind how many square feet there are and the pools and all this. So tell me what, you know, um, I think we were describing it this way. The, the Y looks a whole lot different in the morning than it does in the afternoon and then in the evening. So walk us through what that looks like. Oh, yeah. Your 5 a.m. crowd is a lot of your um, older population or working population. They come in and they swim. They do the treadmill. They do the bikes. They do the, the weights. And then, um, then you have your moms that come in that they've dropped some of their kids off at school when they have babies and they drop their kids off in the nursery and they're here to stress relief and to work out. And, and a lot of senior citizens, we have over 2,000 senior citizens and a lot of them come in in the morning um, and they're in the aqua exercise, the pool, the therapy, they're in the, the weight room, they're in the silver sneakers classes, and they're here to just to take care of their bodies, to be healthier. Some of them are here because they've had diabetes, they've had strokes, they've had heart attacks, they've had all these different types of illnesses, and they're here to recover and recoup, and we're here to help them and help them achieve their goals and to lose weight. 
Um, and then you get your um, afternoon crowd. Well, well, summer camp is in the summer, so but right now is after school. We have about 135 kids that we pick up from about seven or eight different schools. We bring them here, and they we feed them a meal every afternoon before they go home. We also have started doing basic code, basic coding with them, coding skills through block coding, and that's we use Spear robots, Spiro robots for that. And so we've started doing that, which is really cool. Um, and they're doing reading programs and learning sight words. They're doing music and movement and learning different music styles. Um, but the, the, the funnest thing I think for them, they really love the pool. They, we're teaching them how to swim, swim lessons. Um, and we're, they're also doing the playground. There's two new playgrounds that, thanks to Brad Aikens that we have, and Brad's they love the they <laughs> love the playgrounds. Um, that's probably their favorite thing to do. They'll tell you the playground. Um, and then we keep them. They do homework until their parents get here. They have to be picked up by 630. Mm -hmm. And then you have your whole night crowd, which is... It's, it's more crowded at night than it is any time during the day because the, the weight room will be full, the treadmills are full, everything's full, the pool's full, their swim team here, and it's just rocking and rolling. So they're ready to get their workout done and get out of here and go home and feed their kids. And But we um, there's some days we'll have over a 1,000 people come in this Y. So. So, so those of you that are familiar with this particular Y, um, you've seen the parking lot. I, when I pulled in uh, this afternoon this morning, um, I don't even know what time of day it is, who knows, um, when I pulled in this morning, uh, it was full, and and obviously the building's full, but it's so spread out, it doesn't feel congested or, at all. And I thought, man, that's going to be like shoulder to shoulder. Um, I'm just curious, is that was that intentional, or is it just sort of the way the flow just naturally happens? You could, um, you know, part of it was intentional. When we first built this building here in in, in 2000. I was trying to look into the future. Now, it's always one of those things, after you get it built, you wish you'd done something different. Right. You know, but we built it to be able to adapt to what was needed then, but hopefully grow, you know, over the years. And then from, uh, we were able to give the original seed money for the first phase of the building with the gyms, uh, included everything, didn't have the pool. And then, uh, you know, a few, uh, few other people came forward and, and you know, both the outdoor pool and the indoor pool uh, to donate those to add to it. Um, so it's, you know, everything that we started out originally with this, you know, from downtown, learning from that, and uh, I think it was just a few thousand square feet. It was it was less square footage than just the fitness area is on its own of the first phase that we, the first building we rented downtown um, that was courtesy of, of the, the Maddox family, Chris Maddox and his family, and then building this in 2000. We, we built ball fields here first, uh, or soccer, multi-purpose fields rather, and tennis courts uh, back in 96 and 97. So we were able to, you know, work with the schools and some of that uh, programs, but then also bring some here locally. So it was hopefully by design. So you look at the things, you know, 27 years later when we started downtown and then 23 years later from moving into the facility here that, you know, we did a few things right, but we would have also done a few things differently That's too. That's always the case though, It right? is always, always the case. You yeah. always look back and see something. I was just yeah. kind of curious about it because I don't, I anticipate it being really, really crowded. And yeah. it is. I mean, it's busy, but it's not it is. overwhelming. And we've expanded the parking lot um, over the last several months. We've got a roundabout coming in where the parking to get that flow easier through there. So you see that construction coming in. So we're on the downhill swing on that. Um, and then we've got uh, access to a, a rear exit to use down the road oh, wow. okay. on that. And then there's some, you know, some things in the mix here that that uh, Angie and her team are working on, and I'm working with her on some, hopefully some expansions here of some things here in the foreseeable future. So you said, actually, let me ask you again. I always get in trouble when I say what you said, but did you say a thousand a day? There are some days we will have around a thousand people come through these doors and use our soccer fields, and some of them don't even scan. Um, they're out on the soccer field because we have a lot of kids in soccer as well and that go to the, the field, outside. and we have the track, and we, mm -hmm. you know, some of them come in and, and, and scan in, and some of them do not. So there's probably more than what we we know are coming. So, but we have, especially on Monday. Monday's our, our biggest day. Getting back to the mission, um, the why we have a financial assistance program, so it's based on income. So if you want to come in. 
in, you can um, show proof of income, and we go and look. There's a chart, and it says if you get a 10% discount, a 20, a 30, a 40, or 50. So we have um, at this branch over 300 people that are on financial assistance, and at the other branch probably over 100 that are on financial assistance there. So they pay a reduced rate, so we want everybody to have the opportunity to come and enjoy the YMCA. I love that because that gets back to mission, right? Why are you here? It's not, you know, well, if you can afford us, we're here. Mm-hmm. We're gonna, we're gonna make that happen. So that's that's really cool. I did not know that. We also is have that, is that unique to you, or is that a YMCA? All mission? YMCAs that's in the country nice. do that. Okay. It's what it's what we do as okay. as a nonprofit. We provide financial assistance, um, and we also have a silver sneaker program. Where here there's over 1,600 Silver Sneaker members, and the Bell Family Y has about a thousand Silver Sneaker members. So we subsidize a couple hundred thousand dollars a year in their in their programs and services, so so they can be allowed to come to the Y. So before we jump out of this segment, and that may be the answer, mm-hmm. but this is for both of you guys. What's the thing that you're most proud of about? Let's talk about this Y. I say that because we've mentioned three, yeah, but. Of this why, um, I think that we do, we're open to everyone. Everyone in our community has the opportunity to come here. And I'm, I'm so proud that we can teach 600 kids a year how to swim and adults learn how to swim. There's a, there's a lot of adults who don't know how to swim and they get that opportunity here at our Y. And there's so many people that come here that they'll say, the why has saved my life. I was suicidal. I had no friends. My spouse died. And this why has changed. I have friends. I, I'm getting healthy. I'm losing weight. My health is getting better. I've gone off my blood pressure medicine. And to hear someone say that is just so rewarding. And it's just a great place to be. And people love coming here. Yeah, I can see that. I think the thing I'm most proud of is, is when you know the idea of a why first came to me, you know, it was uh, uh, Buddy Oots, uh, Judge Thomas, Clyde Thomas, and uh, and then Diane Brantley mix that in there. If you mix Diane in, if you know her, that's just a recipe for success because she doesn't take no for an answer. But, <laughs> you know, when they first approached it, it was one of the things I'd heard. You know, we, I didn't grow up with a Y here. You know, Winder didn't have a Y, you know, growing up here. You heard people from Athens and um, I remember rec football. We actually went to the Athens Y and played football there. But, you know, as a grow up, the in Athens. In Athens. So, you know, and adults that I know, you hear people that grew up at the Y, did this at the Y, and and we didn't. So when they had that idea that was the uh, bringing a Y here, that was the intriguing part of, you know, beyond programs. You know, it was a program with a, with a purpose, so to speak, of a, of a long-term purpose besides just here's a program, we'll do it. You know, here's a program, do it, go home, thank you very much. But to be able to bring, you know, families and community here, and then this becomes sustainable. I think the thing that I'm most proud of is in though in being one of those early board members, uh, being one of those early contributors and sustainable contributors is that we built something that, you know, this is, you know, 1996, like she was saying, it's 27 years later, and it's stronger than ever. And that was the goal when we started this, that this would be here, you know, in totality, sustainability, and, and you keep serving the community and growing you know, long after we're gone. And and there's a lot of board members. You look at, you know, Clyde Thomas, Buddy Oots. There's some people involved in this early that, that are no longer here. And yet the why is still here. So that, I think, is the thing that I'm most proud of uh, from being on those original board members, um, that they know who they are. I don't remember all of them where I'd mention them. I don't want to yeah. mention some and not. But You called yourself out. You but, you know, you're out. going from those early board meetings, you know, when we got into this nonprofit thing, you know, we were like, you know, does it always have to lose money? You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, non-profit, you know, some of those board, you know, those some of those weekly board members were, okay, I got payroll this week, you get it next week. Yeah. And those were the early days of have we really bit off more than we can chew and is this something we can really make work? But there was just the, the passion to we're not going to fail and and you see where we are today. So yeah, that's so, the hard part, right? so that's the thing that if you singled it down to one single yeah. thing you're most proud of is the foundation and the sustainability that, that myself and, and hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of others, some of those that gave money early on that may have only gave a hundred, some gave more, some gave less, but you know, there was people that gave what they could regardless of the amount because of you had a small board and a small group of people out raising money beyond the first initial part of it saying this is going to make it and this is a good place to put your money in and it 27 years later and it still is yeah i think there's a parable jesus talks about um who gave more he asked his disciples mm-hmm. and 
you know, somebody who has very little and gives everything. Yeah. I think it was the mites. Well, is, yeah. it, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't those that just gave money early on. Well, there was a lot of volunteers that came in here that gave of their time, didn't get paid anything, bought their own basketballs and stuff like that as yeah. coaches and soccer balls and stuff because we didn't have them. You can be a coach, but you got to get your stuff, you yeah. know, and, and they did. So that's the neat part of that group that in that first decade, that really, really sacrificed what they gave both of their time and monies. And do not get recognition. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's a great point. I'm also proud yeah. that we have kept the C alive in the Y, and we are a Christian yes, organization, absolutely. but we welcome everyone here. But we have not shied away from that, and we have Amen. Bible verses all over this Y, and we're doing we, a men's Bible study started here, and they've grown and grown and grown. And we also have um, a church that comes in and does a Bible yeah. study with our after-school children. Yeah. So, guys, we're doing a podcast here. It's not video yet, but I'm just going to give you the visual. I'm about to do a fist bump across the table, I think. And honestly, it's it's 2023. That yeah. is that yeah. takes courage today, mm -hmm. which is so yeah. crazy mm -hmm. to say out loud. It's yeah. like, And I think why I don't mention that, well, that's very important, is that was one thing that of all the non-negotiables we had, that was one from the very first point of inception of the, of the idea of a why coming here was the biblically centered focus that we were we promised ourselves we would never get away from all those years of being a board member starting it out and and so I don't I didn't wasn't overlooking the importance of that but for me and that as as being part of this that was just a non-negotiable that was always part of it if that went away then we just we go home love and respect guys mm -hmm. that's awesome yes so I don't know if there's an easy way to transition into the second segment, but this is where we get to know you. Yep. We get to know the person behind the sign. In this case, we've got two people at the table. You guys were laughing at me earlier because you guys were cheating and looking at some of the questions. But I always love to ask people, what is it? Yeah, they're flipping, flipping it over now like they're not looking. It's an open book test. Yes. Yeah, guys, it's fine. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything about yourself that people who know you might be surprised to learn? I just it could be it could be anything something bizarre that you wanted to do when you were a kid or something that you tried that not many people know. Oh gosh, I don't know. None that I can talk about. You know? there you go. <laughs> that's that's the content we're looking like, for, Brad. That's it. Oh man, I don't I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a family holic and a workaholic. I don't do a whole lot outside of that. Um, I think in today's world. Um, thing that a lot of people don't know because I this was been um, almost twenty years ago is that I had a, a NASCAR team for twelve seasons. That's something a lot of people may not know. I uh, think from I ninety didn't know from ninety three huh? from ninety three to oh four um, on that. Uh, and I actually somebody a few years ago asked me did I knew I had a Wikipedia page and I I did it so I googled Brad Aikens NASCAR and not a lot there but there is one there so that was kind of cool. All right, there you go. That's so that, that may be that may be one thing, yeah. See, I love those answers. Oh man, I'm an open book. No, you know what? Actually, so speaking of actually, mm -hmm. Angie, it's your turn. Um, I I think some people know and some people may not know. I've done <clears throat> three marathons, a uh, lots of races. I did an adventure race here in Winder probably 25 years ago before I even knew I was going to be working here at Fort Yargo. And I had two guys were on my team, and there was three of us, and we had to carry each other on a log and kayak in the in the water, and we had to um, hike or run about seven miles, and we had to um, bike, mountain bike, about, I think maybe 10 miles. So it was a high-tech put-on-adventure race, and I did that here probably 25 years ago. Um, so I used to do a lot of triathlons, too. So I used to be a triathlete, and I did the half Ironman at Panama City Beach. So a lot of people don't know that. So, so guys, I I'm, I'm no promises <laughs> that I'm going to try really hard to get pictures for the social mm -hmm. media. I'm actually talking to the audience right now. I'm looking at you guys, but mm -hmm. do you have pictures of that? Um, I, I might could find some. Here I don't know if I have any right, current ones. I'll so what I, heard, what, I, what I heard you say is you're committing to the uh, mm -hmm. audience right now mm -hmm. that you have those pictures and we can share those. We'll try to get some <laughs> pictures <laughs> and stuff there. Now, one thing, my, my, th my therapist is a John Deere tractor, and that's my therapy. Oh, that's the best therapy. That's the best cool. therapy. Get out and work. I live on a farm, so working with the cows and belling hay and driving a tractor, that's my therapy. So, so Brad, I'm not sucking up, but I, I think you'll appreciate this. I grew up in Illinois. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm... Um, 20 minutes from Moline, which is where John Deere is based out of. Okay. Yeah. And my senior picture is taken at the John Deere mansion. There you go. Mm -hmm. Which is really cool. But my grandfather, believed, he was a farmer, 
believe that a good American drove four truck. There's a sucking up part of it. That's what he said in a John Deere tractor. That, that's that's what it was yeah. all about. When I growing up, Ford had a tractor division, so I grew up driving Ford trucks, but also grew up driving Ford tractors. That's right. Uh, yeah. The blue. The, and, blue, the blue Ford tractors. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He had, he had some old international harvesters too. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember those. Old yeah, guys. absolutely. That's a different podcast. Yeah. I'm sorry, Angie yeah. keeps telling us we got to stay on track here. Okay. Yeah. But um, we're not done with this segment. Before we uh, get into the fun, the thing okay. I love most is, is the last segment. We'll get into that in a second. But um, what is something that outside? Well, you just said you're a workaholic and, and familyholic. But um, if you get a second, what's something that you just you love to do? That's your your getaway. Your should be working. Your, it should be working out. You know, it should but, be but it, we're at the YMCA <laughs> and you're right next door. It's like, oh gosh, you know, probably sit on the porch and watching the sun go down and turning the phone off, which I don't do enough. That's probably the yeah. One thing I, 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 totally I get that. can do that and just be quiet because I get you know I got stuff all the time. So. One hand on an iced tea and the other one um, petting the dog or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like it. I'm the same. I just like to go home and chill and be with my family and because. You know, the why, there's a lot going on here, and a lot of people and a lot of things happen, and um, I just like to go home and chill and just sit there kind of in, where it's quiet. And, you want 100 miles yeah. an hour, and you just want yeah. to, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Um, book or movie? A hundred percent movie. Hundred percent movie. Even did book reports on movies. To Kill a Mockingbird, I rented a movie in high school. Favorite and movie? the book is not like the movie because I failed that. But favorite movie, action pack, probably a Top Gun movie or something like that. Well timed, well timed, Brad. Yeah. Um, what about you? Definitely movie. I'm a sit down, watch a movie kind of girl, and um, I love just Hallmark movies and movies that make you feel good. And, Hallmark, yeah, of course. Yep. <laughs> of course. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, I, so we know you're watching at Christmas time. It's like, Christmas movies, yeah. yeah I love Christmas right. movies. <laughs> okay, I haven't asked this question in a while. Real quick before we move on. Um, Die Hard. Christmas movie or not? Did Angie's looking at Die Hard. Yeah, I'm, I love them. Yeah. Love the movies. Christmas movie or not? Do you oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Do you, 100% Christmas movie. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. give me a you Christmas movie anytime. You guys are anytime. team Classic City <laughs> Business podcast. Yes, okay. Absolutely. Die <laughs> hard and vacation. Absolutely. I had a lawyer Christmas vacation. On. You know. Yeah. yeah right. That's it. I, I well, it, the whole thing is based around a Christmas party. It, that's it. That, yeah, that just doesn't make no sense. Yeah. I actually had a lawyer on, um, based out of Athens, and um, this is a question I asked him. He he wanted to argue with me that it was not. Yeah. And he gave me a horrible analogy. I'll let you go back and listen to it, guys. There's a little, you know, sneak prompt there, but um, absolutely. And I, by the way, not that I've kept track. Um, we've had more yeses than no, so we're winning so far. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, um, this is the Classic City Business Podcast. It is all about Athens and the surrounding area, and we like to promote Athens and the things that are going on there. Um, so I'm going to divvy this up a little bit or break this up a little bit from the, tra- the tradition of this question, but what is your favorite thing about living in this area? Like, um, when I'm going to say the Athens area. Um, what's, your, what's, what's your favorite thing about Athens? you get up to Athens very often? Yeah. Well, of course, Georgia football has got to be of one course. of your top. And Georgia sports in general, that's got to be one of your top ones. But Well, I think I saw you last year. Last year. I don't know if I saw you this year or not, but well, weren't you in the parade for the national championship? Mm-hmm. Weren't you driving a car? <laughs> yeah, last year. Yeah, mm-hmm. did that last year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure yeah, did, so, yeah. So that's definitely a trip to remember and, and think about. But um, do you have, what is your favorite thing? Uh, so football? The games, game day? I mean, of course, game day is always good. you got your tailgates and everything there. But, I mean, just the area just brings, you know, you've just got so much here. You know, within a 30-minute drive, you've got about anything you could ever want. You know, from, you know, downtown Athens, you look at how downtown Winder has, has grown. You look at downtown Monroe. Mm-hmm. You look at Brazelton. Mm-hmm. You know, so you've got, you know, a larger, Long small. County. You've got, you know, yeah, 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 I'm talking about downtown Monroe. But you've got, you know, Athens, which is the larger, small city. And then you've got these, you know, surrounding things that are just really thriving. So it's it's really cool to be able to do that to different farmers markets and areas. And you know, it's just an area that that is, you know, it's a great place to to have and grow a family at. Okay, so this is Athens surrounding area. When I ask you this mm-hmm. question, favorite restaurant? Wow, 
you know, one of my, uh, the, the night or day. Qualified. And, and my my answer, favorite my answer. favorite lunch is probably which I don't go to lunch very often is probably Barbaritas. Really? I go by. I that's go, a that's an Athens. That is that is truly Athens. the bad part about it. I order the same thing every time. I walk in. I don't even have to order. And in fact, uh, a few months ago, my wife met me there. Vanessa and I told her what I wanted, and she started reading down through it. And when she got about halfway, is this for Brad Aiken? She said, "Just oh, we got it." That's funny. so. That is one of my favorite dinner places. Is probably the Bistro downtown. Of course, you've got so many places in Athens as as well that we love too. But I think, as far as here in the Winder area, it would probably be the the Bistro for dinner. And but you know you've got you know you got burger joints. You got so much stuff that's good, but. Sitting over in a corner at Barbaritos with two hard shell tacos, no rice, pintos, <laughs> one chicken, one steak, a small cheese dip, and a tea that's got one inch of sweet tea and the rest unsweetened with a lot of ice. I can order that every day. That is so <laughs> funny. And there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. And I think most yeah. people, don't you go to your favorite restaurant and order the same thing every time anyway? I'm, I mean, that, I'm that person. You know yes. why? Because you like it. You know, I'm you like that it. person. That's exactly yeah. right. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, um, I am going to assume that you haven't listened to a podcast all the way through. So I don't know if you guys know how we sign off. But before we do that, um, I got a little ahead of myself. Is there anything else that you would want our community to know that maybe we haven't covered? Question I haven't asked. There is one thing I forgot to say. Um, We also have a food bank here at the Y, Mm -hmm. and we feed about 50 families every month. Um, And so not all Ys do that, but we do that here at the Brad Aikens YMCA, and so we're pretty proud of that as well. Okay. Well, before before we do sign off, um, tell us real quick about the, um, the other locations that you're a part of. Okay. Um, The Bell Family Y in Hartwell, Georgia, Um, we have a branch there. Um, and we also have just broke ground in January for the new Walton County YMCA in Monroe. And that's going to be about a 35,000 um, square foot Y. And we have 38 acres that was donated. Uh-huh. Um, and we've raised um, over $12 million to date um, in pledges. Um, and got a little bit more to go, but we're right there and hoping to start building in June. So That's, that's awesome. Yes. Well, as you know, the Classic City Business Podcast obviously is at and about Athens. So when we sign this off, when we sign, oh, sorry, when we sign off, basically I just say, hey Athens, thank you for taking this journey with us. It's been fun. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. And until next time, go dog, dog, sick of. <laughs> okay, guys, we did it. We made it to the end of the show. Now that you've heard at least one episode, can you do me a favor? If you know someone you would like to hear on a future episode. You can contact us or have them contact us at podcastjohng at gmail.com or just message us on our social media platforms. We're on Instagram, Facebook. Just search the Classic City Business Podcast. You'll find us. One more thing. Please like, rate, review, and share. All of this really helps a lot. We really do want to connect our community to the local business owner. We believe this is a great platform to do just that. And thank you for taking this ride with us as we get to know the people behind the sign. It's going to be a lot of fun. In Athens, until next time, I'm John G. And go dogs.